Hey Code Crew, how's it going? In today's lesson, I'm gonna show you how to do something like this. Yeah, so typically used in welcome screens, onboarding sequences, wizards, and stuff like that. And you won't believe how easy it is to do. So let's jump into Xcode right now and do it together. All right, so we're gonna get started with a brand new Xcode project. Go ahead and start one. I'm really liking the dark mode of this Xcode 10. Uh, under iOS, let's choose single view app. And for the product name, I'm just gonna call it our slides demo. And I'm gonna save it on the desktop here. All right, so first things first, I downloaded some images from pexels.com and you can grab some too for your slides or you can use any one. I'm just gonna drag them in here and these are the images that we're going to show in our full screen slides. Now let's dive into the storyboard. The first thing we're gonna do is add a scroll view to our view. So uh, let's do that. And we're going to uh, add constraints for all four edges. Now I want it to be a full screen experience and I want the image to go underneath the notch. And so I'm going to uncheck constraint margins and I'm gonna make these constraints all relative to the view rather than the safe area because the safe area doesn't go underneath the notch. All right, so let's do that. So we've got our scroll view here. Next, we're gonna add four image views inside that scroll view. Now, before I do that, I just wanna show you a little diagram about how these image views will be positioned in terms of the auto layout constraints because as I'm doing it, if you're not sure what's going on, it might be a little bit confusing. So all of the UI image views will be zero margin at the top and zero margin at the bottom to ensure that it's a full screen experience. The first image view on the left, however, it's gonna have a left constraint that's zero to the scroll view. And then the second UI image view, I'm gonna set its left side constraint to the right side constraint of the first image view. So it's gonna sit to the right side of it. And then for the third image view, I'm going to set that guy's left side constraint equal to the right side of the second image view. And then lastly, for the fourth one, I'm gonna set the left constraint equal to the right side of the third image view. But however, for the last UI image view, that's the rightmost one, we're going to also make it zero constraint to the scroll view on the right hand side. So that is gonna allow the scroll view to calculate and know how wide its content is and so it can scroll because otherwise it doesn't know how far it can scroll. So that's why it's very important for the leftmost and the rightmost uh, image views to have those left and right constraints relative to the scroll view. All right, so now you understand what we're gonna do. Let's get started. So I'm gonna press Command, Shift, and L to bring this guy up. And we are going to add the image view. And just in case you didn't catch that, that was the shortcut for this guy. You can also just click this button if you want. All right, this is our first image view. So we are going to specify constraints top, bottom, and left. And all of these will be relative to the scroll view anyways, but you can double check because this image view should be sitting inside the scroll view. So make sure of that. Oops, I didn't want to add this right side one. Be careful not to do that. So just top, bottom, and left. All right. Um, it's also going to complain now because we have to uh, add some height and width constraints to the image view. I forgot to specify that, but all of these image views are going to have the same height and width as the scroll view. That's what's going to make them like a full screen card. So hold down control, click your image view, drag it to the scroll view, let go, and then you can select equal widths and equal heights. However, once you click one, the menu is going to disappear. So if you want to select multiple, just hold down command on your keyboard and it'll allow you to select multiple like that. Another way you could do it is just to have both elements highlighted by holding down shift and selecting both of them with your mouse. And then you can come into this menu and just choose equal widths and equal heights. So both are uh, good options. You're going to see some auto layout uh, errors right now because it's saying that the scroll view doesn't know how wide its content is. But of course, that's totally expected because we haven't um, added all of our image views yet. And it's going to be that rightmost one, which is kind of going to close that 
um, or have that right most constraint so that the scroll view can calculate uh, the total width. All right, so for this image view, let's set some of its attributes. For the image, I'm going to choose the first one, and we're going to do uh, aspect fill for the content mode, and we're going to choose clip to bounds as well. And that's just going to allow the image not to overflow the bounds of the image view. I'm going to uh, just press Command D to duplicate this guy, and I'm going to drag it uh, inside the scroll view and change the image to two. Uh, these are fine. Uh, now we're going to set some constraints. So, you know, the top and the bottom are going to be zero relative to the scroll view. However, this one, this left one, is going to be zero relative to uh, the first image view, right? It's going to be zero to the right edge of the first image view. The only problem is in this menu right here, you can't find the first image view because both of them are overlapping. And in order for you to see the first image view here uh, in this menu, you have to move the second image view so that it's not overlapping with the first one. Um, it's kind of hard to drag it out right now. So what I'm going to do is just leave it relative to the scroll view right now, but I'm going to edit that left side constraint um, after it's added. So let's go ahead and add these three constraints. I know this left one is relative to the scroll view, which is not what we want, but we'll edit it. So let's select this second image view, go into the size inspector. And for this leading space constraint, if you double click it, it's going to let you edit it. So you can see that the leading constraint for the second image view, we're going to change it, is going to be relative to image view number one and also the trailing side of it. So when you do that, you're going to see that the second image view is right here. Oh, and also it's like super wide right now because we didn't set equal heights and widths for the second image view. So we have to do that. So all the image views need to be equal height and width to the scroll view. All right, let's duplicate this again. Let's drag it here. Let's change the image to the third one. Did it do it? Okay. And this time we're going to add the height and width constraints first. Like that. And let's select that. Boom, boom, boom. Top is scroll view, bottom is scroll view, left is also scroll view. Again, we're going to edit it after the fact. So let's click that. A leading constraint. So the leading edge of the third image view should be the same as the trailing edge of the second image view. And take note of this constant. Right, This should be zero, but sometimes it defaults to a number based on whatever position it is right then and there in the storyboard. But you want to make sure that there's zero offset because um, you want the leading edge equal to the trailing edge so that they're side by side, right? So we've got one, two, and three. We're going to do the fourth one now. This one's going to be the tricky one because we have to specify a right side constraint. All right, so let's go image four. Yeah, this is the prettiest picture in my opinion. All right, so we're going to add constraints for this guy. It's going to be zeros all around. Top scroll view, bottom is scroll view, right side. Ah, this side. Now we have some choices, right? Make sure you choose scroll view. Okay, so this right side is zero to the scroll view because that's going to cap things off and allow the scroll view to calculate the total width. Left side is still scroll view, but we're going to change this so it's relative to the third image view. All right, so we add those four constraints. And again, we forgot to add the height and width. So let's hold down control, drag this guy equal heights and widths. All right, and then size inspector of the fourth one, double click the leading constraint. So the leading edge of image view four should be equal to the trailing edge of number three. Ah, and this constant, this is crazy number, we're gonna change it to zero. So now everything's neat and tidy. What do we have? We have one, one, two, three and four 
All right, so why don't we just run our demo right now just to make sure it scrolls. You can see that there aren't any auto layout constraint errors. Let me just bring the simulator here if we can drag this guy. Okay, so here we go. See, it's scrolling, but this is like smooth scrolling, right? It's not scrolling slide by slide. And the way you do that is if you hold your, sorry, if you click your scroll view, and you enable paging, that's gonna have that behavior where you're scrolling slide by slide. So let's enable paging and try this again. So you can see now it looks like, you know, pages, you're scrolling through pages of something, which is what we want. The last thing we wanna do is just add those paging dots that you see um, a lot in onboarding and welcome sequences. And it's a great idea because it allows the user to see at a glance how many pages are available for them to scroll through. So in order to do that, um, we have to add another control. It's called the page control. And this guy, we are actually going to add it. And we're not adding it into the scroll view. We're adding it outside because it's got to sit on top. As of now, though, it's sitting behind the scroll view. So we are just going to close the scroll view like this, and we're going to drag the scroll view below it. I know it's kind of counterintuitive, but um, the closer the element is to this root view, the more behind it is. So the page view is actually in front of the scroll view right now. Okay, so what we're going to do, you can see it's sitting right there in the middle. Uh, we're going to add some constraints to that guy. So let's horizontally center it in the container. And then we're going to make it like 20 from the bottom. I'm going to leave all of the margins as is. So it's going to sit right there. It's kind of hard to see, unfortunately. We can change the colors. Again, it kind of depends on the slides. You can add some sort of background or change the tint color uh, for some sort of treatment if you want but I'm going to leave it as is. Okay, so the question is, how do we update? Um, because it's not going to update on its own just because you added a page control. How are we going to update the current page? Well, first of all, we have to detect what page we're on in the scroll view. And for that, we're going to have to do some calculation because the scroll view has a property called um, offset or content offset on the X axis. So you can uh, detect uh, basically how far you've scrolled or how far the user has scrolled inside that scroll view. So on the first slide, the offset would be zero. Let me just show you that again. So right now the offset would be zero. The width of this is 375. So if the user scrolls to the second screen, the offset's going to be 375. And if they scroll to the third screen, it's going to be like 375 plus 375, which is 750. Yeah. It's going to be 750. So in order to uh, calculate what page we're at, all we need to do is take that offset and divide by 375. So this would be page zero, right? At this point, it would be 375 divided by 375, would, which give us one. So that's page one. And then this would give us page two. And the last page would give us page three. And we would simply use that number after we calculate that page index. We would use that number and set a property on the page control called current page. Now that property just basically changes which dot is highlighted. Or we got to change the number of pages to four pages actually. So there's four dots and the current page, it's going to start at zero. That's fine. All right. So let's, um, let me show you how to do what I just described. Uh, let's go into assistant editor and we're going to hook up some of these elements to our code so that we can actually um, perform these calculations. So we're going to add the scroll view. And if you're unfamiliar with how I'm adding these as outlets, you can uh, check out this video. Actually watch my beginner series because I talk about how we're doing this. Um, assistant editor um, just shows you the storyboard with the code behind for this view controller. But this is all stuff you'll learn in my basic series if you haven't gone through that yet. So I'm not going to spend that much time talking about that right here in this video. So first let's hook up the scroll view so that the view controller can detect that 
content offset and those like scrolling events of the scroll view. And the scroll view talks to the view controller through um, its protocol. If you don't know what that is, again, I've got a video and a series on that. So you can check it out in the video card in the upper right hand corner right now. All right, so the uh, way we're gonna do this is I'm gonna create an extension for this view controller and we are going to conform to the UI scroll view delegate here. And before we handle any of its methods, let's don't forget, I always forget this part actually, is to specify that the view controller is the delegate uh, for the scroll view. So after we do that, the scroll view is going to report to the view controller um, whenever scrolling is happening. Uh, so there is a delegate method called did scroll. And in here we can calculate the page index. So let page index equals scroll view dot uh, con is it offset or content offset? There we go. Content offset. And this is a CG point. So there's an X and a Y. We're interested in the X. We're just going to divide this by 375 and we're going to round this to an int and just convert it to an int and that's going to round things and then we're going to set the page control we're going to set the current page property to the page index so let's take a look at this and see if it works hope I'm not missing anything All right, so yeah, you can see the dot updating. Damn, some of these dots are really hard to see, but I think you can use a different tint color if you'd like. Again, if you want the source code, you'll find it in the description below. All right, so pretty easy stuff, right? If you wanna see more tutorials like this, make sure you subscribe and support the channel. Don't forget to hit that bell icon if you wanna be notified of any new videos that come out. And now I have a question for you guys. Do you like the new dark mode from macOS Mojave? Let me know by leaving a quick comment below, yes or no. Personally, I really like it and I'm really enjoying it. Oh yeah, and if you want the source code for this project, I'm gonna be posting it in my Facebook community. It's free to join. I'll be posting the source code for all my videos there every time a new video is released. So make sure you follow the link in the description below. Uh, just request to join, I'll approve you right away and you'll be able to download the source code for the video. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.